Hey everyone, thanks for joining Learn to Play Games. My name is Lance, and today I look at a brand new game coming to Kickstarter called Lonely Undead. This is the first game from Dead Lemon Games. It is a one to four player game that takes roughly an hour to an hour and a half to play. It has a number of different ways you can play it, including competitively, cooperatively, and even solo. In the game itself, you are going to be playing Zs, and you are trying to make friends with the living. You're going to do this by sneaking up on them, injuring them, and then biting them. And if you're successful, you've made a new friend. And I don't understand why they're resisting so much. They, you're just trying to be friendly with them, right? Well, it's not all fun and games. Depending upon the mode that you're playing, if you're playing in competitive mode, you are trying to bite or be the first player to bite seven living or the last player standing with any limbs. If all the other players have lost all the limbs and you have limbs remaining, you'll also be the winner of the game. Now, there also is, this town is not going to give up without a fight, as they don't really want to be friends with you. So there are going to be a number of things for this. For whatever reason, this town has a, a huge number of dogs, and they find you very tasty, and those limbs are just so easy to tear off. So they are going to be plaguing your steps as you move around, as they are going to come out during reaction cards, and will chase you all over the place until they are satisfied. Then, as the townsfolk die due to cars running them over or you failing to bite them a number of times and all kinds of different things, the death toll is going to rise. And at certain points, there are going to be cards that are going to be coming out that will cause all kinds of headaches for the poor Z players. So in this video, I'll go through the main features of the game and I'm also going to show you a sample turn to give you a good idea how this game plays. As always, if you find these videos helpful, if you like what I do, please consider that like button subscribing to my channel. It's one of the easiest ways you can support channels like mine so we can continue to grow and produce this content. If you want to stay updated on all my videos, also consider ringing that bell so you get notifications anytime I release new videos. So let's head to the table and we'll see what this one's all about. Arr. So let's start by looking at the Z's that we can play as. So each Z's card is going to list the name of that Z at the top, and then you'll have four stats going down the side. The first one is your stealth rating, then your strength, followed by your movement rating or number of spaces you can move, and finally the bite numbers you must roll in order to successfully bite a living. Finally, each Z is also going to have its own special rules and will have a spot for its limbs. And each Z is going to start with four limbs. And throughout the game, different things are going to have you discarding these limbs. If you ever have no limbs, then you're out of the game and have lost. And each Z is also going to have a number of bite tokens. On the sides of the cards, there are going to be spaces for the Z to place different types of cards. Zs are not alone and will find all kinds of aid in the form of different cards, such as the cheat card that allow you to change your die, or a sweater that will help you improve your noise, maybe some mixed signals that will help you determine where you're going to have a drive through or foul stench, that breath of yours is going to kill somebody someday, or hangry, which is going to add an additional action for your turn, and all kinds of other ones that you can have. Now, it's not all fun and games for the Zs, as they are going to have all kinds of cards that might hinder them or prevent them from doing such things, such as a thick fog, which is going to have all Zs gain plus two to their noise, or floored that's going to have a car drive by in certain directions depending on the dice roll. Snow day where all Z's are going to have a minus two to their movement and strength or all kinds of dogs that are going to chase you around as you have some sweet fresh meat that they can easily pull off and are going to try to attack you to take your limbs. And this is just a small selection. And there's going to be a number of Z's included in the game such as Beth or Bertha. Brittany, Ben, and even Bob, and each one is going to have their own stats and ratings and their own special abilities. And then what about our victims? Ooh, I mean our friends that we're trying to make. So there are going to be three different types of living that you're going to encounter throughout the game. The first type are your generic living, such as the scientist, or a mom, or a teacher, or a nurse. And then we're also going to have the police officer, such as the medic or rookie. And then we'll also have kids that are living, such as Miss Popular or a Little Thief. Each one of these is going to have its own stats and ratings for its 
uh, stealth check and strength that you must overcome in order to wound that particular living so that you can potentially bite them and turn them into a friend. Each one of these will have different effects if you fail to make a stealth check or if you fail to attack them. And the reward if you do end up biting them and are successful, then they will provide you with certain benefits that you will gain at that point. So before moving on, I do want to mention that all the materials you see here are prototype materials and are subject to change, and it'll look a lot better in the final production copy of the game. With that out of the way, let's move into the board itself. So this board is going to be a double-sided board with one side having the town printed on it with all the buildings in place and all that for a quick, easy setup. And on the back side is going to be a blank town and you will receive building tiles that you'll be able to customize and make your own town out of that to make all kinds of different scenarios. There's also going to be some additional rules or advanced rules that you can add to give each building its own special rules as well. So once you're familiar with the game, you can add in a whole other layer of strategy to that. From there, then the board itself is going to be a grid-based system where you'll be able to have the numbers at the bottom and on the side, and you'll use these two D12s to spawn different living throughout the game and also carry out a number of other actions. You'll also notice that there are roadways going through the middle of the town from each one of the directions, and throughout the game there's going to be different reactions. They're going to have these little cars drive through the town, and anybody that they drive path or drive into is going to be injured or killed including the living dogs and even your fellow z's where they might end up losing limbs and or being eliminated if they run out of limbs from there let's move into the game itself so lonely undead is played over an undefined number of rounds and during each round it is broken down into two phases the first phase is the z phase where the players will take turns in clockwise order and then it'll move into the town reaction phase where you're going to handle moving the dogs around if there are any out on the board and then each z player is also going to have to draw and resolve a reaction card so let's take a look at an example of this so let's go ahead and start by setting out our z's so i'm going to go ahead and place billy over here and then Beth will go, let's put her over there. From there, then we'll move into the first Z phase. So our, our Billy player is going to be the first player to activate. And, and that player has four action points that they can spend to carry out all kinds of different actions. And you can do the same action multiple times throughout the turn, as long as you have the action points to spend. So let's start off by taking a look at a move action where you can move it in any direction, including orthogonal and diagonal movement. So Billy's going to start off, I'm going to move into that space for my first point, as Billy has two movement points to spend for each action he spends to move. And then I'm going to move into the mall next to these two living as my second movement point. From there, I could choose to spend an action to gain an aid card, or I can spend an action if I have aid cards that are not free cards to place them out as I can only I can only use equipment or any items or anything that I have that's equipped to my character. So I may want to do that. So I will spend that. I will spend this one to equip the hangry, and that will allow me to gain an additional action per turn. So from there then, let's take a look at the, the attack sequence as there's going to be a number of steps with this. Now you won't always carry out all of these steps depending upon the living that you're trying to become friends with. So it just depends. First off, any living that is not injured, you must make a stealth check against. So in order to do this, you're going to choose one of the tokens that you're next to and draw that type of card. So I'm going to go after this generic living here. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a card and I have some old dude. So from there, then I'm going to compare my uh, stealth result to his stealth result. And I'm also going to roll the chance die and add or subtract the effect of that to my, my uh, attribute. So I rolled a negative two, which brings my score down to zero and his to one. So I failed my stealth check. So his effects would come into play. So with that, it says to place a card you have equipped back into your hand. So then this hangry card would go back into my hand. Now, once you have either passed or failed your stealth check, you'll never have to do that again. And so from there, you can attack that particular living then and try to injure them. So from there, then I'm going to go ahead and do that as my next action. So I'm going to compare our attack results. So I have a one to his zero. So then again, I'm going to have to roll this chance die and add it or subtract it from my value. So our my value is back down to zero. So in a, in a case of a tie, these, the Z player is going to win those as there is a symbol on here that is an auto fail. So that kind of evens things out. 
So I did injure him, so I will flip his token over to his injured side. And then if I have any actions remaining, I can try to bite him. In order to bite him, I'm going to roll the bite die and compare it to my bite value. So I'm going to, I'm looking for a three, four, or five to come up on this die. So let's see if I can get him. And I rolled a five. So that was a successful bite. And so he is now a new friend of mine. So I would be able to remove that token and add it over to my area to start score, keeping track of my friends and how many points I have. The card would be returned to this card pile, and then I would also gain the benefits for infecting him. So it says, if at the grab and go or the bar, I get to draw an aid card. He was not, so I won't get to carry that out. And then his card is simply discarded to the discard pile. Now let's go ahead and say, for example, that I was unsuccessful in biting him. Let's say that I ended up rolling a six instead, so that was a failed bite. So anytime that you fail on your bite attempt to infect a character, you'll take their token out. So let me see if I can find his token here. There it is, the old dude. And you will place one of your bite markers on there. Now, you can attempt to bite again, but the one important thing to note with this is that if a survivor is bit twice and not infected, that's, that particular living is going to die, and then you'll place his token on the death toll. Now, in the standard game, the death toll are only going to be resolved on the even numbers, so when there are two living, or when the second living is placed on the death toll, then that player is going to have to draw and resolve one of those cards. And I don't want to give away too much, but I'll go ahead and read the very first death toll card. And this is a reality check. What did I just do? I can barely remember, but I just... Did I, did, did I just bite my neighbor? Confused your world now spins in slow motion. You better take a breath. You may take only two actions on your next turn. So this is only going to affect the player that ends up placing the living in that death toll mark. But that's just one example of that. So you'll have a, a deck of those and those are going to be resolved again based on which player places those there. So then let's go ahead and take a look at one more example of this. Let's go ahead and move over to my other player to go. So she has four actions again. So she's gonna go ahead and start by moving. So she's gonna move one, two, and then she's gonna take a second action to do that again. So I'll move here and yeah i'll stay there so from there then on her third action she's going to go ahead and try to stealth check that zombie or the uh, living there so ooh, she's on a scientist so he's got a stealth of two and hers a two so let's see what she gets and she gets a one so hers is now a three so she successfully was able to avoid his detection, so she won't suffer the, suffer the penalties of that. So then she's going to attack him for her last action. So then again, she's gonna roll, and she rolls a two, so she was successful in injuring him as well. So then he is going to be flipped over, but at this point, she is out of action, so she won't be able to attempt to bite him until her next turn, or if another Z is able to get up there, then that player can also attempt to bite him, and so you're stealing friends away from other players. <laughs> okay. So at this point, then, now that all the players have taken their turn, it would move into the second phase, which is the town reaction phase. Again, during this phase, if there are any dogs out, then they are going to move towards that player as each player is, if the dogs are going to be reactions, so they'll have a card next to them and each dog is going to have a specific name. So that dog will move always towards that player by the shortest path. Once you've activated all the dogs, then each player, again in turn order, is going to draw and resolve a reaction card. So let's see what we have here. So this one is Hold Curtain. So this is an event and it's free. And it says that I may discard for free when an event card occurs to cancel its effects. So that's actually a good event. And this one is going to go into his hand and will count against his hand limit, which normally is going to be five. So we'll go ahead and place that in there. And then the next player in clockwise order will go. So Beth is going to draw. And she has Thorn. Oh no, she found a dog. So we have to find his token. All right, there it is. And that will go into the dog park. And then we activate it right away. So on this one here, it says that we're going to roll a chance die. On a zero or the symbol, he's going to move two squares towards the closest bar and then on a number he's going to move two towards its z so let's see what we get here Oop, crack and it's one so he's going to move one space 
towards the closest or the Z that he's targeting. And this one, when he attacks, he's gonna call he's gonna take two limbs. So Thorn is really nasty. He will be placed in the Z's active reactions area. And a Z can have multiple dogs on them at one time. So that could potentially add up. And she is going to have to watch out because he is on her now and she, she's gonna have to be aware of that and try to stay away from him as long as possible as he's got a nasty effect. Arr, 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 arr. And that is the game. So the players are going to continue going back and forth until, again, one of the players is either has uh, is completely out of limbs or until one of the players is able to make seven friends. Well, I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions or comments, leave those in the comments section below and I'll do my best to answer them. Or swing by Kickstarter's main page and drop any questions you have there as well. I'm sure that they would love to hear from you and are more than happy to answer any questions you have. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch my videos and leave me feedback on them. I do really appreciate and take into account everything you say to make the best possible videos. Until next time, I'll see you later.